So wonderful. thinks I'm gonna love it, then no one might have doubt him. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the very first part of Let's Play Mario Golf, my very first Let's Play on this channel. This game was developed by Camelot, who is also behind the Golden Sun series, known for their fantastic music. And this game is no exception. I absolutely adore the music of this game. This is a multiplayer sports game for the Nintendo 64 in which you play as several different Mario characters as well as generic human characters on a variety of golf courses. What we are going to do throughout this Let's Play is that we're going to pick from a variety of characters, work our way through all the tournaments, and also play several multiplayer matches to show off all the different multiplayer modes that can be played as well as show off all the computer players at least once in order to see what they are capable of. There are no difficulty settings for the computers in this game. You can just play as someone, and you just select what computer you will play against by holding the R button while in the player select screen. What I'm going to do in this first part is I'm going to show off how the Here game is played in training mode using Plum. So let's go ahead and get started. While here in training mode, you can select from any hole you want on any course you want, including the six main courses throughout the game, and even mini golf courses. There are three variants of each mini golf course as well. There's Luigi's Garden and Peach's Castle, each with three different putting surfaces. Again, I'm going to cover every single one of them over the course of the project. Finally, there is a driving range, which cannot be accessed anywhere else in the game except training mode, in which there are several different terrains and greens that we can shoot to in order to practice learning the game as well as practice for many different kinds of situations in golf. So it is here where I, will, where I will introduce to you how to play Mario Golf, as well as some of the more technical points. I want you guys to be able to understand what I am doing even as early as part two, so I'm going to discuss some of the finer mechanics of this game to help you understand better the sorts of strategies and techniques I employ. So. At its most basic, to hit the ball, you have to press the A button three times. You press A to start the swing, press A the second time to set the power, and press A a third time to set the swing accuracy. So, one, two, three. How far to the left you go affects how much power you have, and how close you are to the flashing mark on the right tells you how accurately you hit it. So by not going all the way to the left side, I lost a tiny bit of power. You can see that I shot just shy of 200 yards, with a maximum of 208 yards in this case. 
and let's look at it one more time. One, two, three. I did pretty much exactly the same thing. So I shot 199.05 last time, and here I shot 199.50. There is a teeny tiny little bit of variation in how far you shoot. This is because if you look in the bottom right corner, you see a 98-100 right now. That is the percentage distance that your ball will travel to what is expected. This variation exists to sh and gives you a little bit of RNG in order to simulate the sort of effects being on different environments will have. Right now, the ball is put on a tee, and we are on the tee ground. It actually calls you the tea, calls it the tea ground, which you'll see if I put it. Yep, so I'm standing on the tea ground right now. And the tea ground gives you the best possible lie, because you're not even on grass. You're literally sitting on a tea that is pushed into the grass. There are many different kinds of terrain. For example, this is the fairway. The fairway is this thing that I'm shooting towards, and it's generally a good idea to land on this. But if you notice, the one wood, which is the club I'm currently using, has a 9395, while everything else is a 98100. The one wood is also called the driver, and it's your most powerful club. But it doesn't work well for anything except going off the tee. So you should use a three wood instead, even though it says 194 and doesn't shoot as far as the 208, the fact that you will go just about all of your expected distance makes up for that. So, you press up and down on the control stick to change to different clubs. These are called the 1 wood, 3 wood, 4 wood, 2 iron, 3 iron, 4 iron, 5 iron, 6 iron, 7 iron, 8 iron, 9 iron, pitching wedge, sand wedge, and putter. So, what I want you to do is look in the bottom left corner right now. Do you see how tilted the sand wedge face of the club is right now? As I move more powerfully in club, that tilt becomes less and less and less and less. It's getting closer to vertical rather than horizontal. And then once we move on to the woods, you can see that on the right side of the wood, we see that it also gets more and more vertical, rather than horizontal. This is because the less powerful the club, the more high it shoots, rather than more forward it shoots. If you look at the gray dashed line in the middle, you can see that the line is pointing higher and higher and higher as we get weaker clubs. As you get more powerful clubs, it shoots farther forward, and it also shoots lower. The woods are powerful but low shooting clubs. Your irons are also called your mid-range clubs. Your low irons and your, your short irons and your wedges are your shortest clubs that shoot very high, which is good for shooting over trees, for instance. Now look at the meter at the bottom. If you only shoot halfway across, you're only going to get about half of your power. See how I'm at just about 100 yards? There's about half of 208. I'm actually a little bit under half, which makes perfect proportional sense. On the right side is the indicator that tells you how accurately you hit the ball. You see that red line there? Your third A press must be on that red line in order to hit a good shot. I still hit it reasonably straight, although the ball did go somewhat off to the side. I can press B during a shot to replay it. The ball came up way short and slightly to the left of my intended target because my mark missed over to the right. You'll notice that if I miss my mark over to the left, the ball will sail toward the right direction and also come up short. That red line is critical to making sure that you hit good shots. 
And as you play with more powerful characters, that red line will get shorter and shorter, so there's much less room for error. You can also press the B button to hit a more powerful shot, and you'll hit it significantly farther. Two hundred nine out of two hundred twenty-eight. Not bad. I missed the uh, perfect power tick mark there, but it's fine. You'll notice that I'm on the fairway, which is ninety-three ninety-five for the one wood, ninety-eight one hundred elsewhere. There's certainly much less good terrain. For example, here's fairway with a little bit more of a grass clump on it. Eighty-seven ninety-one for the one wood, ninety-four ninety-eight for the three wood downward. You can even have a fairway that has a bit of a divot in it. That happens from time to time. I'm not exactly sure what causes it to happen. But as you can see, using the one wood on it gives you a pretty short red line to work off of, so that's not a good thing to do. Then you have the rough, which has taller grass. The taller grass is much more difficult to hit off of. Definitely don't want to be shooting a driver out of this with 60-68. But 90-98, it's still feasible to shoot a 3-wood and downward. But the rough... Actually, that's what, that's probably actually the, the semi-rough, actually. This is the actual rough. This is the actual rough. And you're at 50-60 for your wood, so you should be shooting an iron out of here. Then there's the deep rough. The deep rough with a 50-80 variation is extremely difficult to hit off of, and there's a lot of RNG to hitting out of this area because there's a ton of blades of grass between the club and the ball when you strike it. So there's a lot of luck as to whether you get a powerful stroke out of there or not. For example, I just hit a 165 94 yards, which is a little over half. If I do that exact same shot again, I see that I hit it a different amount. So, yes, the less variation you have, the better. So it's always important to find yourself in a good line. Avoid the deep grass, and also avoid the bunkers. The bunkers are these white sandy areas. You hit 70-85 out of these in even the best of circumstances. So you definitely want to avoid these. Definitely don't hit any woods out of here. There's also... You can also hit the bunker really hard and end up burying your ball, even as deep as this. So this is really bad news. If you hit a ball really hard into the bunker, you're going to have a hard time getting anywhere. The sand wedge is designed to get yourself out of the sand reasonably okay. But even a powerful sand wedge that shoots 72 only got us about 30 yards. So, yeah, sand is bad news. Definitely don't want to land in it. Alright, let's go back to the, uh, tea ground. Next thing I want to discuss is wind. The very, a very, very important thing that I need to tell you guys about this is that with a power one wood, I shoot 228 yards under the absolute best of circumstances. The ground ahead of me is flat, there's no elevation change, and there's no wind and there's no rain. So when I hit a perfectly timed 228 with a one wood here, I should expect to go almost exactly 228 yards. There is a tiny bit of variation with the 98-100, but it should still be very close. Nice shot. You get a nice shot when you hit both the power marker and the accuracy marker perfectly. The 98 to 100 RNG did bring me down a tiny bit, down to 223 and a half or so, but still reasonably accurate. However, we can turn on the rain and we can change the wind direction and wind speed, which will influence the ball heavily. And as you can see, even though the wind is blowing to the right, and it's a bit of a headwind, the fact that it says 228 does not change. 
So watch what happens when I hit another shot here. Another perfect nice shot, shot that is now being blown to the right by the wind and slows to a stop much more quickly because of the rain. So the name of the game of Mario Golf is to try to set up a shot that will put yourself in a circumstance where you can aim for a place you want to aim at, but compensate for all the different conditions that are happening to you. Whether it's the wind direction, wind speed, whatever rain is occurring, and whatever the impact zone of whatever terrain your ball is situated on. So here I'm at a 94-98, wanting to aim for this screen. I'm definitely want to put, gonna want to put more power into this one because of the strong headwind and the rain. And I'll want to aim to the left and give it a bit more power because I'm shooting 94-98 rather than 100%. So you have to take all that into consideration, and even then you may still screw up. So now I'm learning from my mistakes, and shooting it further, and adapting to what I have learned. Nice this on. is not an easy game to get used to. It takes a little time, in fact it takes a lot of time, to truly understand all the subtleties and nuances and get really good at this game. So that's part of why I'm kind of front-loading you with all this information about this game before we start, so you can get a better idea of what I'm actually doing even early on in this uh, Let's Play. The last thing I want to explain to you is how this thing in the bottom right corner works. You see this red dot that's moving around? You don't have to strike the exact center of the ball. What you can do is strike the top of the ball or the bottom of the ball to add topspin and shoot lower by holding up, and shoot higher and add backspin by holding down. You can also give your shot side spin and curve them sideways accordingly. Watch this. By holding the ball to the left, by holding the stick to the left, I curve my ball to shoot to the right of where it was before, where it was previously aimed. Now observe as I hold the stick to the right, and the ball uses side spin to curve to the left of my target. You'll find that I actually mix this up later on in the Let's Play. I'm actually recording this because after I've recorded a few parts because uh, this first part failed initially when I was recording it. Next thing I want you to see is what happens if I hold up. The ball shoots really low, but rolls forward a lot. There may be times where this is more advantageous than a standard shot. Now watch as I hold it down. Nice shot! The ball shoots very high, much higher than before. Bounces a fair bit, but doesn't roll particularly far once it reaches ro a rolling state. Shooting high, shooting low, and shooting right in the middle, they all shoot approximately the same distance under ideal circumstances. However, there are different times where you'll want different kinds of shots. For example, watch what happens when we have, if we have a tailwind, for example, if we're, if the wind is blowing from behind, watch what happens when I shoot normally with a tailwind. Nice Our maximum distance is 208 yards, and the tailwind blows us much further than that to 224. If we hold forward... I didn't get the perfect mark this time, but you should still see a significant difference. When I hold forward, I'm only at 214. I did get a lot of tail topspin, which helps, but I was not in the air for as long, which meant that I couldn't benefit from the extra distance as much. On the other hand, 
if you're being given a tailwind and you hold down, we shot 224 with the standard shot. By holding down, we put ourselves in the air for longer, and we get a little bit extra distance, 224.73. So there are times where it is advantageous to get sent further with the wind, but what if the wind is blowing straight at us? What if we have a headwind? And let's maximize the wind speed to exaggerate the effect more. How strongly will a 21 mile an hour headwind hinder us? With a standard shot, it'll bring us from 208 to only 173 or so. And that's not a perfect shot, by the way. What if we hold down? We shot 173 nice before shot. with not perfect marks. But this wind is now blowing in front of us so strongly that even with perfect marks, putting us in the air for longer increases the influence of the wind. So now even though we hit it more powerfully, we still didn't go as far, 168. But a good strategy to use if you want to maximize distance, hold forward. Nice. Instead of 173 or 168, we use our top spin to roll forward and end up with 185, a 10 yard improvement by holding forward. So you should use your impact, you should use your impact marker, this thing over here on the right, to, in, to your advantage in order to figure out how you want the winds to affect you and how to minimize or maximize its effects. Finally, I should tell you, there's one more lie that I haven't described to you, and it is called the water hazard. You obviously do not want to hit the water. Oh, too bad. The water hazard will give you a one-stroke penalty and will place you right next to the riverbank. Obviously it doesn't in this case because we have to shoot off a tee ground in the um, training mode. But yeah, that's basically it. There is an actual hole up here all the way at the end that you can hit into. In training mode, all the other flags are actually uh, silhouettes and you can you hit straight through them. But yeah, that's basically training mode, and that's all of the bare basics of how Mario Golf works. Hopefully it wasn't too technical for you to follow, and that you enjoyed and were uh, well-educated by this. I hope it improves your understanding of the game. While I'm here, I guess I should mention, you can save a game and then continue it. I don't have any saved games right now. And you can also go to the clubhouse, where you can go to options, where you can erase data, which I will not do. Use either a simple or dynamic camera. Turn on stereo or mono sound, and turn the music on or off. There are also plenty of tutorials on how to play the many different game modes, and how some of the mechanics of this game work. I'll explain to them as we go. And the status tells you all of your stats on all the things that you have done so far. And how well you've done on tournaments, for example. I've obviously beaten all the tournaments. I guess one more thing I should explain to you is the controls. I kind of went through all of this stuff without going over the controls, so I'll take care of that real quick. You can find the controls on any pause menu. You can pause the video in order to look at them in more detail. So you basically use A to shoot, R to zoom in forward, and press A to go back after that, B to switch between power and normal shots, and you use the C buttons to change the camera. C right moves the camera up and out, C left moves the camera in. And you can press C up to move the camera forward, and C down to move the camera backward. And you can even do this while looking at your target. 
if you want to get a closer look at what you're aiming at, for example. It's definitely a wise choice to get familiar with the camera. I'm not sure what the difference between simple and dynamic camera is. I've always used the dynamic camera, but perhaps we can look at that another time. Uh, this has been going on for about 25 minutes, so I think I'll end it here. I think I've explained everything that I need to explain. When we return next time for Let's Play Mario Golf here Part we 2, we will take Plum and have her compete in the Toad Tournament. That should be a fun time. Here, you will see the all 18 of the Toad Highlands holes, and after that, we'll play some multiplayer matches and some ring shot. We will proceed through all the courses with this similar uh, format. We will complete a tournament, some multiplayer matches, and ring shot for each of these six courses. That's basically how this Let's Play is going to work. I'm also going to weave the mini golf courses in between the courses. I'll start with Luigi's Garden on green, then I'll go to Luigi's Garden on slow, Luigi's Garden on fast, and Peach's Castle on green, slow, and fast. These will go in between the standard golf courses. So, thank you guys very much for watching the introduction to my first ever Let's Play. I will see you guys next time for the Toad Tournament. Do your reading, do your homework, ask your instructor questions, and go to office hours.